All right. Mm, okay. So here again, uh, for corridor part, I only have like the parts that we just created for the earthworks. Uh, so the image and then the thin surface. So let me just hover on top of this and start to create an alignment for this. So um, we have horizontal alignments, we have uh, vertical alignments as well as 3D alignments. So let me just show you a little bit of all of these. So let's do alignment and in this case, just the horizontal one uh, to draw on uh, this thin surface. So like this, I'm hovering over and then you will see this blue line uh, as in an outline for um, the alignment. So you can draw whatever where you want to put this road slash bridge. So maybe somewhere until here, it's all right. So just press enter when you're done. And uh, in an instant, you will see uh, that on the level zero uh, of the z-axis, you will also have an horizontal alignment. So the alignment right here on, on the surface is a 3D alignment. So this is on the surface, it's a 3D alignment, but the horizontal one is projected onto the level of zero. These are connected. So if I would, for example, like drag this grip right here, you will see it will move in uh, the 3D alignment as well. So you will see the instant change um, here as well. Same for if I do it on this 3D alignment, if I move these grip lines, you will see that it will move the horizontal one as well. So these are connected with each other. So this is a horizontal alignment. Um, let's also create a vertical alignment as well. Uh, so here, vertical alignment view, click on the 3D alignment or the horizontal one. So maybe this one. And I'm just going to the top view to place it somewhere here. It's a little bit stretched out. So we can go to the properties to set the scale factor a little bit differently. So you will see more clearly. So this is my um, horizontal alignment. So you'll see if I zoom in, I have two lines basically. So this one is just um, the, the cross section of the existing thin surface and the, the red and blue one and a little bit purple as well is the vertical alignment. So this is the part uh, of my road basically. But now of course, if you see it like this, it's close, uh, it's, it's very close to the existing surface. It follows along. Uh, but it should be smoother because, yeah, if you have a road, uh, it should be smoother than this. Uh, this is too much like the uh, existing surface. So here you can change that. Um, so here the geometry is automatic update modes and the accuracy factor is 10. So if I do that on, for example, two, you will see that my alignment now is much smoother than before. So like that, I can change my alignment a little bit to um, to create start creating my uh, road. Again, uh, for automatic, you can also switch to manual. So now if I again select the vertical, uh, vertical alignment, you will see that I have grip points. So like this, I can manually change some grip points to make it less steep, for example, like this. Um, in the properties as well for the PVI, so the, the point verticals, uh, you will see if I uh, like toggle through the different stages of my vertical alignment, you will see here, I will have uh, different properties for you as well. So you can check, for example, the grade in or the grade out percentage. So for example, here, the grade changes around 10%, maybe a little bit too steep. You can check these things out. So if you have certain like requirements, you can do it like this. Um, let me just do it's a little bit more smooth. So somewhere like this should be fine for my road slash bridge. So here would be a part of the road. 
he would be a part of the road and in the middle would be a part of the bridge that we are going to create with the corridors. All right, so now we have changed these um, elevations in my um, vertical alignment. You will see now in uh, the 3D space, you will see that it's also changed a little bit. So it, according to the vertical alignment, this uh, 3D alignment is also updated. Um, so now we have a, a nice line crossing the thin surface uh, representing part of the road as well as the bridge part. Of course, if you want to change some height still, you can do that by using the grip points. So these are the vertical grip points and the these are the horizontal ones. All right. Um, now we have the 3D alignment. So let me show you how to create corridor templates in order to use those templates to create a corridor. Um, let me open up some little drawings that I made beforehand. So here you see some cross section drawings for the this one representing the road part and this one representing the bridge part. And this is another version of the bridge part that we're going to use. So uh, this is just closed polylines at the moment, uh, but we have to create templates for that. So um, the corridor template, it's a consists of two parts. So you have the corridor template and you have a corridor template element. So first, let me create the elements first. Select everything you need and select a base point, in this case, the middle points. So you see now I will have uh, the corridor template elements created. Maybe in black, you will see it a little bit better. So something like this, let me just Uh, again, for this part as well, corridor template elements, base point like this. Uh, you can also have different or multiple corridor template elements for one template. So for example, I want this one as one element and maybe a separate element for the side rail. So like this, instead of one template element, I have three. Okay, so now we have the template elements, but we don't have the template itself yet. So let me just create that as well. So here, corridor templates, I can just place it somewhere underneath. So it will have like a, this kind of template symbol. Let me do that for the other ones as well. Uh, somewhere, I would like to have it aligned like this. Again, for the last part, like this. So these are just the elements, but uh, the, the templates, but I haven't assigned the elements to it yet. So I will do it now. So add template element to the template. So select the template element and select the template. And like this, my template is finished. I can do that for this one as well. And lastly, here as well. So I'm just selecting the first template element and then select the template. Here I also have these template elements uh, that I've created separately. Uh, for now, I will not add them just yet. I will do that later. Um, so you can see more clearly the difference. Um, okay, so my templates are ready. Uh, so we can start create uh, the corridor. So in this case, it would be easier to have two viewports open like this, so you can see clearly what's happening. Let me zoom into the two templates that I need for now, and then zoom out to the actual 3D where I want the corridor to be. All right, so again, the purple line is the 3D alignment, and the, the blue line right here is just um, following the existing tin surface. All right, now we're all set to create a corridor. So create corridor, select the 3D alignment, and then select the corridor template. In this case, the first part is uh, just a road. So select the 
first template, enter a region, for now it's zero, to around, let's say, 600 meters. All right, so now my first part of the corridor is created. So you see here now, you have uh, a first part of the corridor and here it stops at 600 meters. So uh, this is the end point of my first region we call. For the second part, I want to create this bridge template to it. So let's just select the corridor, add region, and then now select the second template. Um, the region starts from 600, okay, and then Let's do this until 1,300 meters. Enter. So you'll see instantly that I have a second part created after my first template. And then running across my 3D alignment until the point where I reach 1,300 meters. For the last part, it's crossing the tin surface uh, again. So let me recreate the last part with the road template. So just again, add um, element region, select the first template and just finish it until the end of the 3D alignment. All right, so like this, I have my first uh, part, or I mean, my first attempt for a corridor. So that looks pretty good. Um, for templates or for the corridor, you can also uh, select this corridor and open up the properties. And just like the vertical alignment, you will you can have the separate region property. So if you check these, and you can toggle between the three regions. So I have region one, which is the roads, region two, the bridge, and region three, again, the road. So like this, you have some properties for each. For example, I can go to region one and, and let's say, um, I don't know, like change the interval. Like this, you will see that the interval of this uh, template section is a little bit different. Um, I can change it back a little bit bigger, maybe two. You will see that it will change as well. Now, uh, for the bridge templates, at the end, uh, I want to change it to another template and I don't want to use this cross section anymore, but I want to use this one. So we can do that as well. So you can do that uh, by editing this corridor instead of recreating the full corridor again. So let me just select this corridor go back to the properties and then you will have to go to the second uh, region because that one is for the bridge and then template handle click on the three dots and select the new template which is this one all right so you see now in instantly um, in my 3d this template has changed to the new one so the new one doesn't have the the railings right here so uh, that looks pretty correct. And then, um, I don't know if you remember before, here I had some other elements created as well, but I haven't added to the template yet. So let me just do that now. Add this guardrail to this part. You will see it's instantly added in uh, the 3D as well. Let me do this again for the other side and you can see in the 3D that it will be added automatically as well. So add this template element to this part. So that looks pretty good. Of course, um, because you use multiple template elements in one template, it's very handy if you want to move things or you want to edit some stuff. So for example, like this, I want to move this template element a little bit more to the middle, you can do that perfectly and it will also instantly change in your 3D corridor. For example, like that. All right. Um, I think for now the templates are done. So I can just go to my main and check out my corridor. Of course, uh, you can have several um, visual styles as well. So I like to use meshes. 
So this is the one for meshes. Uh, you can also do it, for example, with just uh, the interval of your section drawings, or maybe only it's the string lines that you need um, for a certain, or you can combine the both uh, like this, for example. Um, but yeah, let me just change it back to meshes. Uh, If you want to, you can also just in general switch the visual style in your drawing to realistic, for example. Then you won't see uh, the meshes lines until you really select them. All right. So that's my um, corridor. Again, if you want to change the alignment itself, it, these are all connected. So my corridor will change as well. So. You don't have to redo the full uh, alignment and the corridor thing again. You can just move it around if you would like to. Um, OK, uh, let me just do a last part as in finishing up uh, this part of the road. Uh, I will just do it for this region. Uh, but basically, you can do the same for the other part as well. Uh, but for time's sake, I will do this only for this part. Um, so firstly, let me um, extract the corridor. So just like tin, uh, tin surfaces, you can uh, extract uh, some entities out of it. So if I select the corridor and extract from corridor, you can extract a mesh, a solid, polylines, and so on. So in this case, let me just extract polylines. So I just want to have the sidelines right here so that I can create a grading um, on the side. So I can start the grading and I select the line that I just extracted from the corridor like this. And then I can create um, a grading. So let's say 65 or something like this. Same from the other side. So we have our grading um, and then again, if you want to move it, everything is connected to each other. So if I move it, the grading will also move along. 